One of the things that helped me the most uh, with creativity um, with photography was actually studying it formally in school. I studied uh, art history, graphic design, drawing and painting too as well, and all of that creatively you know, really helped me with my career uh, on, a, on a creative standpoint. It's always important to shoot the work that you love and even more important to show the work that you love doing and want to get hired for. Uh, you know the saying, dress for the job you want, not the one you have? I like to say, shoot for the jobs that you want, not the ones you're getting. I first started out shooting Little League, uh, and I shot my brother when he played baseball. Then after that, I progressed and started shooting high school. And I applied that philosophy to every time I shot. Even though I was shooting Little League and doing like a portrait of my little brother or his team, I would treat it like it was a campaign for a national brand for the jobs I wanted. Same thing, you know, when it came to shooting high school. Uh, and I approached it that way. I treated it that way with my lighting, with the planning, with the scouting and everything like that. Uh, so it's always important to show and shoot the work, you know, that you want to get hired for. Because uh, clients don't hire you on your work. You have to show them that you can do it. Even when I'm on assignment, I always try to shoot what I love doing. A perfect example of that is my Olympic Swimmer Portrait Series. For that assignment for Getty, I was hired for one day for a four-day event to shoot action photos. You know, on the third and fourth day, I went out on my own, looked around the whole pool, found a spot where I could set up my studio, and the USA Swim and PR brought me all the swimmers in one by one. I had a few minutes with each of them, and that's how the series came out, uh, came to be. And from that work, that led to other jobs that were portrait-based. To prepare for a shoot, there's many things that I do. Uh, one of the first things that helped me to prepare for a shoot is to know the end results I want. Because if you know the end results that you're looking for, then it's easy to kind of work backwards from there and realize everything that you need. I make a kind of an all-out dream list of everything that I need, regardless how ridiculous it is. If it you know, would involve 20 lights, you know, three assistants, I start always from there. Because uh, once you have a list and you can look at what you need, you'd be surprised to see how resourceful your mind could be and where you can start finding solutions you know, to your problem and everything you get. You know, once you have it all laid out, you know, even if you don't have anything, you could start thinking in your mind, oh, I might have a friend that knows a friend you know, that has the Ferrari you want to shoot. Now, I would say never let the lack of equipment you have or, or the lack of things that you have in your immediate disposal to be a deterrent to have you uh, execute your, your shoot. You know, if you can't, if you don't have the gear to shoot it, or you can't afford to buy it, rent it. If you can't rent it, borrow it. Do whatever you have to do to execute your vision. I always start out that way, and I never start out planning to shoot with what I have. Because when I first started out, I had next to nothing. So if I just started out with that, I would have almost nothing to show you. One of the reasons why I love doing portraiture is because of all the great people I get to meet. You know, Drawing lighting diagrams, getting all the technical stuff, uh, for me that's only half of the equation of the preparation for a shoot. The other half, which is really important, if not more important in my opinion, is uh, I want, one of the things I love doing is researching who my subject is. I like to know as much as I can about them, you know, what they like, what they don't like, you know, what hobbies they have. And the reason for that being is to see if we have any common ground. Finding common ground with your subject, that's a way to create rapport quicker with them and the way they could be relaxed when you're doing their shoot. Well, you're a veteran, right? You've been playing yes. since 97? I know. This is another walk in the park for you, right? Yep. Alright, Christian, so I know you said you were nice and shy and quiet when you were growing up. Oh boy. Right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, none, none, none of that in this shoot. Oh, no. We want you uh, nice, lively, really? and uh, having a great time, alright? Right. You know, if I am in a situation where I don't know my subject at all, I always ask questions instead of assuming. You know, if someone comes all covered with tattoos or comes with a bunch of jewelry or dressed a certain way, I never assume anything. Any assumptions that I might have, I try to leave them out the door. Uh, and instead, I use all that to ask them questions and get them to talk about themselves and open up. And then you create that rapport and it makes a much more relaxed environment to create a good portrait. One thing that all photographers should get in the habit of is printing their work. Whenever I go to portfolio reviews, I always make sure I have a printed book along with an iPad. The printer book always makes a great first impression. Uh, the iPad or any digital form that you can show it in is also helpful because you can show additional work. I've been in situations where I had editors who really love the, the work in the book and they've passed around my physical portfolio to other editors. And as a result from them passing that my, my portfolio around to other editors, that's gotten me callbacks and jobs. Whereas in every single meeting that I've, I've had, they've never passed around my iPad. But going in and showing your work to potential clients is always a process. You never know what to expect. I've been in meetings where I've hit it off completely, you know, with a dream client one time, 
went really great. We sat, we talked for like 45 minutes to an hour. He loved my lighting and he loved my work. And the meeting ended with him, uh, with them saying, you know, we have to find a way to work together. And I never heard from this person back again. Even after I stood in touch with them, sent a bunch of follow-up emails and everything, never heard from them again. And then I had another meeting where I had an editor literally go through my entire portfolio book in 30 seconds, which was seven years worth of work. Then after he flipped through all the pages, said, what else you got? So I showed him my iPad, showed him more work, flipped through it in like 10 seconds, and said, what else you got? And you know, that's not a sign of a good meeting at all, or I thought it went horrible. You know, and, and from that meeting, I ended up getting callbacks and getting assignments and jobs. So you, you never know how a portfolio review is gonna end up, and you know, a good one could result in never getting work, and one that you think went bad could result in you getting called back. So you never wanna get discouraged, and you always wanna you know, keep at it, keep making new work, and keep showing new work, and then you know, keep making those phone calls to get in those portfolio reviews. Despite how portfolio reviews go, how much work you're getting or not getting, the most important thing in a photography career is having a good attitude, keep shooting new work, and showing it to the right people. Out of those three, the most important one is having a good attitude. Being nice to people and being humble in this industry is imperative. Nobody wants to work with someone who feels entitled or has a bad attitude. What I love about photography is all the people I get to work with, but what gives me huge satisfaction is being able to create an image that I love. And that's always what keeps me going regardless how much work I have to put in.